Well, praise the Lord. Good morning, everybody. I'm glad to see you. I trust you're glad to see me. I, this has not been planned, so I want to call someone up onto the stage. And uh, we go back many, many years together. And uh, his name is Brother Jay Mungal. Would you come up, please, Brother Jay? And he's been in the meat industry now, I think, for three or four decades. And uh, how we came to know each other was because my brother owned a butcher shop. And he was present in the church that we were going to when the pastor released me to start the ministry. So I want Brother Jay to confirm that and ask him how we left that church to start our own church. Good morning, church. Reach out in the mighty name of Jesus. Um, during the conversations with Pastor over the years, I always remembered him uh, as one of the uh, home cell leaders. Uh, he didn't do our area, but he did a lot of the, some of the family and friends spoke highly about him. And I always remember the day that he left the church uh, with him and his uh, family. And um, I clearly remember Pastor Clive releasing him for him to open up a church here in Devon North. Yeah, and we were called in front to pray. Yes, and he was called in front, and uh, uh, he was called to the pulpit. Uh, has Pastor Clive prayed over him and released him? Yeah, clearly remember that. Thank you, Brother Jay. Come on, give the Lord a great hand. Well, that's how I left the church, and uh, you heard it from a witness. I was blessed. I didn't steal no one's church. I didn't steal anyone else's sheep. We started from zero, ground zero, building up over the years. Amen. Amen. And I always remember what Kenneth Hagin says. He says, if you break someone else's house to build your house, then God will break your house. So we left with the blessing. Amen. I want to share this morning very briefly with you. Thank you, uh, first of all, for all the wonderful messages and gifts that people had given me. And uh, when you exit, I think uh, I've told Connie and Morel, uh, they'll give you pieces of cake uh, so you can have that on your way out. Uh, it's at the back of the reception. I want to talk to you this morning about something dear to my heart, and I want to talk about personal, your personal secret place with meeting with the Holy Spirit. Now, many people over the years have asked me questions, and I was supernaturally called by God to serve Him, and I didn't want to. I ran from the call of God. That was my testimony. I just didn't want to yield. And uh, God one time spoke to me because when I was filled with the Holy Spirit, I was blessed in this way that even when I was in circular employment, that um, I was always Holy Spirit filled. And uh, the Spirit of God guided us, guided me, even in my circular employment, before I came into opening the church. So, I want to start with the opening scriptures found in John chapter 16, verse 7. You'll see it come up on your screen. It said, but verily, truly, I tell you, it is for your good that I'm going away. Unless I go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go away, I will send him to you. And it goes on, it says, I'll guide you into all truth, and he will glorify me, talking about the Holy Spirit. So, as an introduction, I want to say, when you enter the secret place, you become involved with the Holy Spirit. When you exit the secret place, he becomes involved with you. Isn't that powerful? The Holy Spirit leaves nobody unwarned. That means if you're a child of God, He'll always speak into your heart. 
always warn you, always guide you. We are not left as orphans on the earth. You are the tabernacle of the living God. If you want to know where God lives, just shout back your address because God lives in you. So all of you constantly are walking with God, with His Spirit, guided by His Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the easiest relationship for me in my life. He understands. The only person who requires no explanation. He understands you intimately. We all cut differently. We have different personalities. We have different genders. We have come from different backgrounds. But we won in the body of Christ. That's why when Bradley was doing the communion, the break new bread and partaking of the bread and the shedding, the drinking of the blood is not symbolic. It is the body of Christ. It is the blood of Christ. The Holy Spirit is the only person capable of being content with you. Isn't that wonderful? He loves you so much. He's content with you. He knows your faults. He knows your failings. He knows when you trip up, but he will always be with you. You are never alone. So I remind myself constantly of that. I'm never alone. Someone asked me one day, how long do I pray? I can't really tell you. Because as I'm driving, as I'm racing, if God, the Holy Spirit, lays someone in my heart, you may not know it, but I'll shout your name loud and I'll say, Lord, I pray for so-and-so. I don't know what they're encountering. I don't know what they're going through, but Lord, you'll take them through. So the secret place is where you meet God every day in your life. It is where you enter his presence and become changed, informed, corrected, and love. See, it's, I don't have to police you. I don't have to run after you. I don't have to uh, be with you to know that deep inside my heart, I know the one that lives in me lives in you. So don't be hard on yourself. Be easy with yourself. As we forgive, the hardest thing is, we know God forgives us, but one of the big challenges in life is that we fail to forgive ourselves. You must forgive yourself, and you must love yourself. Each one of you must love yourself, because if you love yourself first, then you've got love to share with others. If you don't love yourself and you have a poor self-esteem of yourself, then you've got nothing to share with other people. Because the love of God has been shed abroad our heart by the Holy Ghost. Say amen. In your prayer room, in your prayer closet, or any place that you have sanctified and set apart exclusively to deal privately and intimately in your life. So there are times when I do pray with Pastor Zubeda, we hold hands and we agree about something, especially when somebody has a need. But there are times, and every day, she closes her room and I close my room door, my study, and we have our private time with the Holy Spirit. It's where I can talk to Him. It's where I can receive His love. It's where I can receive His guidance. Because I, too, need protection. As much as I pray for you, I trust you are praying for us. We covered the prayers of the saints. We've got to love and pray for each other. Irrespective of what you're going through, don't lose your self-esteem. When you are rejected by others, God accepts you. We are redeemed from the curse into the blessings. 
Now the man that you heard on the screen is a Jew. He's not a born again Christian. And look at the principles he talks about. He's a God of abundance. But you know, today I tell you, it is the last days. And many men of God are being categorized and called different names. Hey, we, you know, you, you, they, they call uh, kind of, you know, that's a prosperity teaching. That is a, uh, a grace teaching. This is that. Listen, it's an all-encompassing word. God redeemed us. He redeemed Israel from Egypt. They didn't leave with nothing. The Egyptians gave them the gold. When the angel of death came past, God gave them a specific instruction. They couldn't put paint. They applied the blood of Jesus on the lintels and doorposts, not on the threshold, because the blood of the lamb must never be tramped on. Say amen. And that's the same blood that has power today. There's power in the blood. Rahab the harlot, when she hit the two spies, and you know her background. I don't want to mention it, and I think you all know the story. She hid the spies. But she was not in a kosher business. But God had mercy on her. Thus, before the spies were released, they said, hang a scarlet red thread on your, outside your window on the wall so you and your household shall be saved. Amen. And that symbolized the blood of the purest lamb, the son of God, dying. And that blood covers you today. We overcome by the word of our testimony and by the blood. The blood today still has power. I don't know why some people don't believe in that. It still has power. So I want to share just briefly with you some keys of entering the secret place. Number one is enter daily. The psalmist said in Psalm 88 verse 9, he said, Lord, I've called daily upon you, and you have stretched out your hands to me. So remember that. Enter, number point number two is enter with expectation. Enter with this in your heart that when I pray, when you pray, you have expectation that everything you ask of God will be given to you and will be met. The Bible says God honors in Hebrews 11 verse 6. For he that comes to God must believe that he is, and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Expect God to respond to you. Expect pain to leave your body. Expect confusion to depart from your mind. Expect revelation concerning yourself. Expense, expect change when you enter God's presence. Amen. Expect supernatural peace Amen. to explode in your heart. It doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter what the economy is saying. Expect peace in your heart. My third point is enter before you make financial decisions. Or in Philippians 4.19, it says, the Apostle Paul said this. He said, but my God shall supply all you need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. My point number four is enter confessing your weaknesses and so that the Holy Spirit can make you strong in your weak places. Everybody has weak places. Everybody has an Achilles heel. It may be different from person to person. But God does not judge you. 
God gives you another chance. He gives you another break. He gives you mercy. Amen. So expect to be made strong. My fifth point is, enter with a broken and contrite heart. That's the key to walking with the Holy Spirit. When you walk in a proud manner, the Bible says God resists the proud, but He gives grace to the humble. So you must be in your heart. Humbleness does not mean that you cannot drive a fancy car or you can't wear fancy clothes or have a nice good house. It's got nothing to do with that. But it's your heart attitude that you're always thankful to God because He's a God of abundance. He's a God that always blesses you. And I say to, you know, parents that have small kids, don't spank your kids with your hands. Your hands are for blessing. You can use any other method, but I won't say much about that. But don't use your hands to spank your little kids. Your hands are for blessing. When they go to sleep and you are awake, go silently in their room and touch their head and say, you are a blessing. When they leave home in the morning, mom and dad, when you're dropping and picking up your little kids from school, and even your older kids, just place your hands upon them and say, you are a blessing. That's what... We saw John Austin's mother did to Joel Austin. Every time he walked to the school bus, you know, in the U.S., they have those yellow school buses picking up the kids. And John Austin was a great man of God. And uh, he had, back in the days, he had 2,000 people as congregate members. But they were well connected with all the other ministries, etc., etc., and every time Joel Osteen's mother used to run on the pavement and say, Joel, you are blessed. And look at him today. He's a leader of a 30 to 40,000 church. God raised up a man of God because his mother took time to bless him. So bless your children. No matter how young they are, no matter how old they are, even your grandchildren. Just lay your hands on them and pray a blessing over them. Number six, enter when you feel forsaken and all alone. When you feel alone, ladies and gentlemen, know that God is still with you. If other people reject you, it doesn't matter. It's their loss. And sometimes we blame ourselves. And we blame ourselves, oh, you know, and then they, they will, you know, forsake you and backstab you. We must stop that. We must celebrate each other's blessings. The more you celebrate people's blessings, God will bless you. I remember I used to, when I was attending a certain church, my car was very, very old. I'm telling you. The first, um, at one stage I had a car. It was a VW Beetle. It had, the pan floor had rusted. And I used to tell mom, please don't let your feet go through the hole. Back in the day. You know, sometimes we got to tell the story that we came from Nothing. But all grace and thanksgiving to God who has lifted us from nothing to something. People may forsake you, but you are never alone. When my pastor prayed for cars and, uh, you know, uh, kind of went out to bless cars, and there were some rich people back in the day, and they had brand, buying brand new Mercedes Benz and stuff like that. I used to park my car where I could kickstart it. You understand? So um, I used to always go with my pastor, and as we lay my hands and we pray, and I'll accompany him, even when I was in circular employment, 
I said privately in my heart, I celebrate this because one day I will drive a brand new car. You see, the thing is, you must tell your story for others to understand where you come from, from nothing to something. And then you'll always be grateful because in our generations, if you go back, our grandfathers, grandmothers had very little, but they made little much. So don't feel forsaken or rejected. And my last point to you, or let me read the scripture in Psalm 37 verse 25. It says here, it worked for a greatest king of Israel. He says, I've been young and am now old, but I've not seen the righteous forsaken. Or he seed begging for bread. I've been young and now I'm old, but I've not seen the righteous forsaking and he seed begging for bread. And my last and final point is point number seven enter when you need money. I'm sorry, enter when you need mercy. It was mercy of David's anointing. For Psalm 37, 26 says, He is ever merciful. He is ever merciful. As I close the service this morning, I want you to know that He is always merciful. His mercies will always be with you. It doesn't matter who does what, leave them in the hands of God. God will take care of you. God is your defense. God is your shield. Say amen. amen. If you really receive something, stand up to your feet and clap your hands to the Lord and say this with after me. Say, I am not alone. God is a merciful God. He will always show me mercy. Amen. There's no condemnation in Christ. You are the righteousness of God. Amen. I'm going to call Minister Tommy to end the service, or Pastor Adrian. Yeah, thank you. Bless you. I love you so much. Thank you for listening to me.